What's up, dudes? My name's Avery, you can call me Mochi, and uh, Damarung is a thing that happened, so I'm gonna tell you about it. Before we get started, though, as always, I do have a couple of things to say, the first of which is I am an art student, which means I have no money. I still want to make content like this for you because I have fun and I want to inform you of all of the worlds outside your door so that you can have as much fun as I do. And it would really help if you donated to my Kofi! Huh? Second of all is I really want to thank Sam Stone, Erica Skirpin, Zach Hirschberger, and the entire team behind Pertho Productions that wrote Damarung and let me be a part of it and all of the directed cast that helped like actually flesh out the world that we lived in. You are all amazing people and we've created something so cool and I can't wait for you people on the internet to hear about it. So thank you all for doing that and letting me be part of it. The last thing is that if you want to come to Dameron for yourself, there's a website in the description, perthoproductions.com. You can go and visit the website and learn about Dameron and their other game, Dead Legends, which is also a dream game of mine because I just want to be kissing Kate Barlow. That's all I want in life. In addition, Dameron Season 1 will have four games this year. Here are the dates. Ooh. Ah. So yeah, let's get into the nitty gritty of Damarug. So this was actually my first straight medieval game. It was a little interesting because my home game is technically fantasy medieval, but it also has a steampunk element to it. You can watch the video about my first game and my home game here if you're interested. I say here as though YouTube still has annotations. There's a link in the description somewhere. It's fine. So I've been following this game since I heard about its creation, probably in February, January, something like that-ish of 2018 and I'd been following their Facebook pages, I'd been in the community groups, I'd just been slobbering over it like, oh my lord, I need to be a viking, I have to go. And now I guess I have to explain exactly what Damarung is. Damarung is a mythic Dark Ages fantasy game. At least that's what it says on their website. One of the organizers came up to me afterwards and he was like, I saw somebody call it a climate change LARP? And so I looked on the internet and it was true. Diatribe is a New Zealand LARP blog and user Idiot Savant called it a, yeah, I just wrote down climate change LARP. And I thought about it and I was like, really? And then I realized, you're not wrong! They basically picked a time period in the Dark Ages, which tends to be about the 9th century, some, some a little older, some a little newer, but uh, they mashed all these Dark Ages cultures together and created like a whole separate little world out of it. The cool thing about this one is I've been to post-apocalyptic games before, but never an apocalyptic game. The deal with Damaring is that you are literally going to witness the fall of the world. The feels are strong with this one. Tell you what, one of the interesting things I witnessed with this game is like, you know, you see all the YouTube videos and they're like, oh, well, there are no lives in my area and everybody's all like, why not start your own? And I was like, do you know how hard it is to start your own? But actually I realized that it's not. Here's a little bit from Sam Stone, one of the uh, organizers of Damarung on how Damarung actually started. Well, Zach actually came up with the concept. He is a consummate lore writer, and uh, he said, I want to play Vikings in the woods. And I went, all right, fine, but I want it to be a little bit more artsy than that, because that's who I am. And I'm like, we're going to do a critique on Viking life, and we also to put on a whole bunch of safety measures. And so we had just had this concept that, all right, well, we're going to just play Vikings in the woods. And that was the start of it. It really was not anything amazing or big. Um, the design of it is really something I can talk about. The concept of uh, the lore, that's all Zach. Uh, and it really did stem from, I want to play Vikings in the woods. All right. It doesn't have to be as frilly as this. It can just be you and your friends in hoodies and jeans, like theater of the minding that you're pirates in the woods, and it'll all be good. All LARP is valid LARP. Do the thing you can, I believe in you. So Damarung is more of a Nordic game. So it's less like a boffer where you're hitting, hitting, hitting things and more like a, we're exploring our inner characters kind of a deal, except I can't give a good description of actual Nordic games and what they're supposed to be, but you know who can? Erica Skirpin. North America is a competitive culture. We grew up playing Monopoly and Parcheesi and things where when you game, you win. When you go into LARPing, most of us are trained to win. There are boffer LARPs where you have to get the most hits in and you kill people's hit points. And even in other games, it's a resource or an economy game. And we have a win element here, which is treasure and food. 
but most of this is focus. our winning is just the story and the emotions that you put in it and being able to lift other players and lift their stories but a lot of North American players struggle with if I don't have a win condition what do I do so this game was session zero the very first ever game of Damarung. And so that means we laid the groundwork for season one and all of the seasons to come in this weekend. So the thing that makes this video different from all of the other game type videos that I've done is that for this game, I was actually on plot. I was directed cast, moved up to a uh, cultural lead at the very last second, so no pressure or anything. Basically what that means is that for the three months leading up to game, uh, the other directed cast members and I were actively building this world. We were writing the lore, we were coming up with traditions and everything. It was just, it was the coolest thing to be able to start to build a game. It's such a good game. Everybody's so focused on making the story better for everybody else. And uh, it's great, and I'm super excited. It's so cool to see something that we've worked on. I know. It's really cool. And what happens in game influences the lore too. Like I remember there was one time when uh, the Jarl's wife Ingrid and uh, one of the Vikings, I can't, it's Wolf here, I feel like that's his name. Anyway, they came into the Kronlander cabin and we had a big discussion about how each of our cultures viewed the afterlife. And one of my guys, Lord Otto Steiner, I love you Chris, he went on this long rant about how the Kronlander afterlife, the Juvite afterlife, was basically like, it's this field and it's just peaceful and quiet and you can ride forever and whenever you're hungry a fruit tree springs up and whenever you're thirsty there's a river in front of you and whenever you need shelter a little tree will just give you shade and honestly I don't know how he came up with that in the moment or if he came up with that in the moment but either way it was something that just added so much to the world that we were playing in. And honestly, the fact that this is such a player-driven game makes me so happy. So, speaking of cultures, I guess I have to tell you about them now. The first one, and the dominant culture, because it takes place in their land, and you know, there's there's so many of them, is the Nordvik, and they are Vikings. What do you know? The terrors of the sea. Anybody else race Christian? No, just me, that's okay. <laughs> And there are a couple different factions of Nordvik, including, but not limited to, the Sea Wolves, the Bannermen, Carl Hold. Are the Oathsworn their own thing? They might be their own thing. I'm not even sure at this point. I'm, ca I'm counting the Oathsworn. The Kerns have much fewer people, but they are no less cool. They are basically the Celtic race, but like none of that William Wallace joke. We're talking like early Celts. I'm talking like plaid pants, giant swords, tartan capes, those little fancy cloak pin thingies with like the twisty metal and like the singular. Mm, I love the Kern aesthetic so much. Freedom! The Jotnar are this race of giants that are like plaguing the earth. They're immortal, they're ancient, they're all different in their own unique way. There are like five subspecies of troll that I can't even name right now. They're basically designed to be the NPC sort of bad guys of the game, I guess. In a game that doesn't have NPCs, you make you make do with what you have. There are also the crawling, who are less of an NPC bad guy, but no less creepy. They're kind of like the tribal dudes of the game, but not like Native American, anything like that. They're meant to be modeled after like second century Scandinavians. So like ancient Vikings. But yeah, they do things like take part in ritualistic cannibalism and have animal totems. And you know, they do the tribal things that are creepy to the rest of us quote unquote civilized. Some of us may be less civilized than the crawling. You know, that's a thing we'll find out in role play. And last but most definitely not least was my culture. The Crownlanders, who are basically like 9th to 12th century crusaders, like Frankish, Saxon, Germanic, a uh, little bit of Byzantine in there, all of that mushed into one culture. And now I suppose I have to let you meet the Crownlanders because they're amazing. Honorata Balsamino, Lady of the Crownlanders. She is Roca, the watcher. Sir Frederick von Trier of the Order of the Sun. I am Lord Otto Steiner. Arthelius Reichmunda of the Order of the Lion. Jean de There was this guy, Elroy. I didn't know much about him, but he was a Crownlander and he was with us. So you get a shout out, Elroy. Hotman oh B. Shea Rosenreiter of the Crownlanders. Lady Alma Friedrich. Father Eberman, the Red Priest. Sylvia Hawthorne, the, the most badass archer this side of, oh, I don't know, anywhere. And I played Adelaide 
Aurelius Diogen of Godemar, the Peasant Knight of the Crownlands. So as plot, it was my duty to help guide roleplay and sort of help people get the experience that they were looking for at Dameron. And honestly, the Crownlanders made my job so easy. You guys did such a great job leaning into yes and, creating your own versions of the lore, really adding to the world that we were playing in. And honestly, I have to give a shout out to all 11 of you <laughs> for doing what you did that weekend. You, you're amazing and I love you. The story so far before we enter game. So the infamous words of Jon Snow. Winter is coming. From the north, uh, drought and zombies, like risen undead creatures, I guess, I don't know, we'll learn more about it, are coming up from the south. It's driving everybody into this one place, and now tensions are very high as all of these refugee groups are meeting up. It's gonna be great. We came into town, the Crownlanders, 11 of us out of 500. They all did. They, they, they did. <laughs> And we met the guy that's been setting stuff up for us here. His name is Arthelius. He's a cool guy. And he's like, wait, where's the rest of you? And we're like, this is it. And he's like, well, crap. And then he was like, okay, so we're supposed to meet somebody at this crossroads about a thing or whatever. And then we spent the next like hour waiting for them. We met up with the people we were supposed to meet up. It's a bunch of Kerns. So yeah, we get there and they're like, hey, so I, we heard that you have this book that is ours and we would really, really like it back. And I'm just sitting here like, I don't know what you're talking about. And then this guy, he's like, I have that book. You mean this book? <laughs> I thought we were gonna fight. The leader comes forward and he's like an old guy with a leather crown. And he's like, he, he, he he's official looking, right? And he's like, oh, Hey, you're, you're, you're Father Eberman. And he's like, yeah, you're Turlock. I know you. Can we work out a deal for this book or something? And so we worked it out that they're going to give us two bags of food today and we're going to give them their book back. You said anything about giving them their book back. What well, we did. <laughs> and then we all decided to go into this little hall and just party, like talk to each other and do the thing. And it, it was great. I met, I met a guy named Donan. Donan? Donan. Donan. Yeah, that's it. And he's really cool. He's funny as all get out. And I told, I, I, I shook his hand. I'm like, okay, my name is Adelaus. And he was like, you look like an Adi. I'm going to call you Adi. And he's been calling me Adi the entire weekend. And then Arthelius, who's been like setting everything up for us here, was like, hey, so we need to go meet this queen that's going to be here because the queen is here. We get in there and in the front, it's uh, Art, me, and Father Ebermond. There's a bunch of people be like, hey, why are you crownlanders here? And we're just like, I mean, we were told to meet the queen. No, they were like, no, but why are you here? You're gonna like steal from our land. And like, you're gonna mooch off of us. And we're like, I, I mean, I was kind of hoping we could build our own life, not mooch off theirs. So I mean, I, th I think I said that. Uh, they finished with that and they're like, did you even bring a gift for the queen? And we're like, we were supposed to bring a gift. Uh, eventually, I'm just like, uh, 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 I can offer something. Uh, I, 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 I don't know if the queen just needed to be entertained, but I sing and tell stories, so yeah. And the guy whispers in my ear as we're going in, like, do you know how how, how important is this to you? Like, do not screw this up. Like, if if, if you screw this up. No. Anyway, the, I walk into the little Nordvik common room. I get into a conversation with uh, the Jarl's wife about being a peasant knight. And she was like, so, you're a knight. Yes, but you're also a peasant. Yes, how that happened? And I was like talking to her about like, peasants are kind of like sheep in our country. And I was like, I, I, I attached the peasant to the knight because I want to show them that they can be something more. Then they started banging at me. If you had heard the amount of crap they gave me in that room, you'd be surprised I hadn't snapped earlier. And then they were like, hey, hey, hold up. It's it's the queen. And uh, she was like, yeah, my gift is due me. And like, y'all are delaying it by talking to the peasant knight. And so I sang. They accepted my gift. I, I It was all good. And then this guy walks in. He's like, hey, there's the king of the Jotun outside. And he wants to see the queen. And we're like, what? <laughs> So we all go outside with our weapons ready to see the King of the Jotuns, and he's just talking to the Queen, and then somebody attacks him. Great, so we're all fighting the King of the Jotun, and then we all get back in, and we're just kind of talking about it, and this Jarl is like looking at me funny. And so I start looking at her funny. And she was like, I think you're looking at me funny. He was like, haha funny, or like funny funny? And I was like, well, I can make it ha-ha funny. Two Jotuns walk into a bar, but a Kern walks straight under it. 
And she was like, ha ha ha, that's real funny, that's real funny. And then she chokes me. And she's like, that, that, that was a better joke than the one you told. And the guys were like, yep. And I still didn't lose my cool. And then she starts insulting either the guy that's been like running around acting as my mercenary or Lord Steiner. I cannot remember which. So I walked over and I gently reminded her that if you continue to treat this, my people in this way, I will not stand for it. As we were getting into the shouting match, the head of the shouting match was, she was yelling at me and yelling at me and yelling at me and I was like, look, I'm not gonna back down unless you back off of my people. And she was like, oh really? Well then we'll kill you for it. And she had her cronies like fight me. Like there was this guy with two axes who was the, he was a thorn in my side later. I love you, Justin, it's okay. And he had his two axes out and he was ready to duel me. And I was like, let's go. And everybody else was like, no, 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 no. You don't wanna fight here, you don't wanna fight here. And we were like, and so eventually she like walked away and all that junk and <laughs> this guy over here was like you shouldn't have done that and I was like so I'm just supposed to let him disrespect my people and he was like look as penance you're gonna apologize in public and so I was like ugh fine and so I walked over to the cabin and I was you like look mortified when I said that to you it was the greatest thing I mean, yeah. you had control over it but I said that and you were like panicked I was like <laughs> so I walked over to the Earl's Hall and I was I saw one of the Nordvik that had been making fun of me earlier and I was like, hey, I got something to say to the Jarl. And he was like, let me go find her. And then he walked in and never came out. But I actually had some really cool conversations with Donan and with uh, Inca, the leader of the Crawlings. We talked a lot about like me not taking crap or whatever. They, they seem to be on my side with this. Sorry, man. But yeah, and then I got back in and I was like, you know what? And I told this to Dona and I was like, if she's not coming out, then she's not coming out. The priest told me not to move from the spot until I've apologized, but yes. The priest can suck my sword. We got back into this little cabin here and we've got everybody in the common room and Father Eberman looks up at me and he's like, do you have something to confess? And I'm like, if I caused you harm with what I said, then I'm sorry. And then, <laughs> Two dudes in fur showed up and my man Baru went out to investigate. He came in and he was like, hey, there's some people on our porch, you should meet them. And I look out the window and it's two Jotuns. And we're all like, crap, 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 crap. We're like arming ourselves discreetly. We're like trying to keep it cool. Lord Steiner was chatting them up and I was like, like, I believed him, you know? I was like, why are we dealing with these Jotuns in such a friendly way? And so, finally they left, and as they're leaving, I just hear Steiner whispering, keep smiling, keep smiling. So we still don't trust them as far as we can throw them, right? And we're like, no, no way. But like, we don't want to get killed by a bunch of Jotuns. So, <laughs> yeah, uh, we have no clue where we're going with that. But after that, the Jarl shows up, you know? The Jarl. So just for the record, there are like five standing Jarls in the game right now, and there are so many more former Jarls and Jarls that are not recognized in this game. So I really need to stop saying the Jarl when I, when I really mean Jarl Siv. She comes in and she's like, hmm, I've seen all I need to see. Let's continue our patrol. She was looking for the Jotuns, and I don't know if she saw us. Yeah, no, that might come back to bite us if the queen, because the queen's gonna like hand out land. And if the queen knows we're dealing with the Jotun, that, that's, that's, that's not gonna end well for us. Anyway.